human capital. It's a big part. We think of capital all the time. We think about capital of about giant equipment pieces. We think about capital as cash, money to help run the organization. But really, human capital is a big part of our organization. A lot of times, you don't even need an own facility. You lease your facility. That just depends what you're doing. We focus in on the human capital as a competitive advantage as an organization, and that really is a big part of org behavior. You know, the numbers vary depending upon the study, but for the most part, if somebody leaves your organization, they say that bringing somebody in from the outside, training them, it costs you about six months of salary to bring them up to the stage where somebody left to be have the knowledge and the base skills as possible. It costs money when people leave. You want to keep your good people. Sometimes you bend over backwards to do that. You give them opportunities. And we'll be talking about that as we, as we go through our entire course. A key thing when you hire somebody, you're going to examine their knowledge, skills, and ability. We call it the KSA in human resources, but the knowledge, you want to make sure they have a good solid knowledge base. You want to check and see if they have the skills to so check out the resume and you see if they have the ability to do the part. It's part of almost every job description. Those three things, the KSA, they'll lead towards creative thinking and other resources that bring to the organization. And by the way, let me just, we'll talk about this a little bit later. You don't want to hire people like yourself. And seriously, you don't. Now, if I hired everybody like me, we'd have the smartest organization around, except for the fact that I prefer to have people that think differently than me. I don't want to have a rubber stamp working for me. I want to have somebody who's going to challenge me, make me a better thinker, a better decision maker, and also have better input. We'll talk more about decisions, but let me just paint the picture to you a little bit early. The more people involved in decision, the higher studies show that the quality of decision are. The problem is it gets slower and slower and slower with more people you add. Like, oh my gosh, look at Congress. They can't get anything done without talking about it for four or five years. So we have that aspect of it. it's not just them, it's almost every large organization, they move slow. To some extent, it's a healthy thing because of the fact you want to have more input, but the other part is if you want to get things done, it becomes a problem. We'll talk about that process later on in a future chapter. Human capital is really essential for you as an organization. It's essential for your survival and the success overall. It's sometimes it's difficult to find the right person or put them in the right spot. Somebody leaves you, you may be hemorrhaging for a long time trying to find somebody to replace them. I've had to go through, I had somebody leave an organization. We had a president who was, was a little bit excited and so, and so somebody left. And so we ended up hiring two people to do the job of the one person. Sometimes that happens. So sometimes it's difficult to replace employees with technology. We turn to technology for everything. But you know what? Let, let me be real frank on this topic. The reality is I trust people more than technology. Technology just does the things that you tell it to do. People can actually think and actually do things with the technology to get the things you want to have accomplished by it. By the way, technology doesn't have all the feelings and emotions involved. And so you'll have every single AI, artificial intelligence chatbot that you possibly have. They're all sociopaths because they're not dealing from a human component, but just a machine thing without emotion. Yes, I'm not certain they want those critters running the organization. Human capital, it really gives you a competitive edge over other organizations. I don't know about you, when you get on the phone, you're trying to get through and get a problem solved with something that you purchased or bought, and you get from jump from bang, 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 technology. Yes, it's really cute and everything, except for the fact, I want to talk to a human. Yes, I don't know about you, hopefully you do too, but the pandemic really did sit there knock us back about personal relations, didn't it? So now, we, now we're working again to build that up. If you develop some of the things to talk about in this class, especially good communication, good solid soft skills, that's gonna help you be successful organizations above others because you're paying attention to some of the soft skills that employers really want. A lot of times a, a human, the advantage you can have with a human doing that in unfamiliar situations and different tasks, humans proceed very well. And a lot of times the company's investment in employees 
motivate them to well, they believe in me so much, they're spending this kind of money on me. That's a really good thing, isn't it? Stakeholders, we talked about that earlier. The firms need to understand, manage, and satisfy the various stakeholders. The challenges, sometimes you'll have conflicting interests, limited resources. If you have multiple entities, here at South Orange County Community College District, we have three entities. We have the district office, we have Saddleback College, and we have, of course, the five is, the fall is Irvine Valley College. So you have the three different entities and you only have this pot of money. We have to divide the money. And of course, all the money really should go to Irvine Valley College because I work at Irvine Valley College and you're a student here too, right? Except the Saddleback people, this is really strange. They think the same thing about them. And so does the district office. So you have conflicting interests with limited resources. So that's a big thing. It's a challenge in every organization, General Motors. You have multiple different models out there and they all compete for the attention of who gets the resource allocation. That is a constant, continuous process in every organization. If you have more than one entity in it, they will all plead saying, my project is the most important. So pay attention, that's a lesson you have to have. Values, when you talk about the values of the organization, no matter what you say or think or do, values are determined at the very top. If you disagree with them, and it depends how far you disagree with them, if you disagree with them, you may want to go find another place to work for it because eventually you'll have a conflict that'll sit down and you need to do this. I don't like that. And it's a really bad idea. I used to believe in this place and now I don't anymore. Okay, values come from the top. When you change the people at the top, if you have a problem with them, the values will start coming from the top and they eventually come down to you. So you have to determine what those values are. They're stable, they're evaluated beliefs about our preferences and courses of action, and the leadership will determine that for the corporate. So, so that's a big deal. There's a new thing out there, and it's just being labeled better. It's called corporate social responsibility. These are activities where people are now looking at the organization, trying to make certain that we're looking at, is the corporation responsible to the community that it serves? We call it corporate social responsibility. You know, but I, I make fun of this on a regular basis, especially when I teach marketing, is one of the companies out here, and, and you always say, the helpful black people. Well, in Southern California, we have a constant thing called the helpful Honda people. They got these people with blue shirts. They have these cheesy commercials. And that's about the best way to describe them. They spend almost no money on the commercial, but in the commercial, oh, you want the Girl Scouts to go to camp? Honda will help you with that. We'll fund your whole Girl Scout trip to go to camp this year and everything else. You know what? They, they spend maybe 10% of the cost of a regular commercial, but they've been running it for years. Do you know why? It's successful and we like that. We like it when the corporation goes up and they take care and they do things to help support the community that they serve. You'll see it in Target behind the cash register. You'll see it at Trader Joe's, they put it out there. We like corporations that do something and give back to the community. If you have input into the organization, I encourage you to pay attention to this lesson. It's called CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. It deals with the economics, it deals with society as a whole, and the entire environment and those stakeholders that's around you. You also have a new thing out there that's called environmental social governance. There's a big activity right now, and, and sometimes these things, they wax and they wane over time. Instead of an organization saying the only obligation we have is to the stockholders and the shareholders of the organization, we need to sit down and have a triple bottom line, we call it, of, of let's do an environmental evaluation, let's do a social evaluation or impact on society and the overall governance that we have. You'll see a lot of this. Right now, this is on the uprise, but it's already started taking a couple of down ticks because sometimes we've had CEOs going off paying attention more to the, the, the triple bottom line of the ESG, environmental social governance, rather than the shareholders, and they don't have a job anymore. So this is important to pay attention to, and we'll address this a little bit later on, because this is part of the overall organization behavior. Here's an integrated model where you talk about the different aspects of the inputs and the processes, and the inputs of the individual and the organization as a whole. Now, part of this is that we all have a life. 
And sometimes our life is not all the organization. So you have a relationship between your personal life and your organization. It's impossible to sit down and not have a conflict. I had to drop somebody off at her, at her place of work this morning. And I, I'm running late. Ah, you come walking in. That's going to have an impact on your day because if you come late, you miss part of a meeting and everything else. You have that. Your your personal life does overlap in the org behavior. And sometimes if you're if you're a leader, you might get a call at 8:30 at night from your organization and all of a sudden it's a crisis. Oh, that happens all the time because you have your life is not all by itself. You have the things mixing together. And we'll talk about the aspect of the work-life balance. Or maybe you don't want to have that. And we'll talk about that aspect as well. So human capital, it's a big thing. It's critical to develop and keep, at least usually, once in a while, you want to get rid of somebody. Okay, corporate social responsibility, CSR, and also the concept of ESG, the environmental social governance, what we call the triple bottom line. So with that, that's about human capital, one of your most vital assets in any and all organizations. Take care.